Chapter 11 When Ye awoke, dawn had already broken. Sunshine spilled down out of a cloudless blue sky and warmed an earth still damp with morning dew. He stretched lazily and breathed in the smell of bread and meat cooking. Nearly next to the campfire, his back turned to the valman. Gary Yaks was preparing breakfast. Ye glanced about. Slanter was nowhere to be seen. All will be as it was. Abruptly he remembered everything that had happened. The night gone past and sat up with a start. The king of the Silver River. Or had it been just a dream? He looked down at his hands. There was no vision crystal. When he had fallen back asleep, the crystal, if there really were one, had been clutched in his hand. He felt about the ground for it, then through the travel cloak. Still no crystal. Then it had been a dream. He felt hurriedly for the pockets of his tunic. A bulge in one pocket revealed the presence of the old stone. Or was it the pouch that contained the silver dust? Quickly his hands flew over the rest of his body. Looking for something? Yeah's head jerked up and he found Garrett Yak staring at him. He shook his head hurriedly. Uh, no, I was just... He stammered. Then his eyes detected a gleam of metal against his chest where the tunic opened in front. He looked down, tucking his chin back. It was a silver chain. Do you want something to eat? The other man asked. Yeah, didn't hear him. It hadn't been a dream after all, he was thinking. It had been real. It had all happened just as he remembered it. One hand felt down the front of his tunic, past the length of the silver chain, touching upon the orb of the crystal fastened at its end. Do you want something to eat or not? Garrett Yaks repeated, a touch of annoyance in his voice. Yes, yes I, uh, yes I do. Yeah mumbled, rising and coming over to kneel beside the other. A plate was passed to him, filled with food from the kettle. Massing his excitement, he began to eat. Where's Slanter? He asked after a moment, recalling once more the absent gnome. Garrett Yak shrugged. He never came back. I scouted around for him before breakfast. His tracks led down to the river and then turned west. West? He yes, stopped eating. But that's not the way to the Anar. The weapons master nodded. I'm afraid your friend decided he had come far enough with us. What's the trouble with gnomes? They're not very reliable. Ye felt a twinge of disappointment. Slanter must indeed have decided to go his own way. But why did he have to sneak off like that? Why couldn't he at least have said something? He had thought about it a moment longer, then forced himself to resume eating pushing the disappointment from his mind. He had more immediate problems to concern himself with this morning. He thought back over everything the King of the Silver River had told him last night. He had a mission to perform. He had to go into the deep Benar, into the Raven's Horn and the lair of the Maud Wraiths, to the peak called Heaven's Well. It would be a long, dangerous journey. Even for a trained hunter, he had stared hard at the ground. He was going, of course. There was no question about that. But as game and determined as he might be, he had to admit, nevertheless, that he was far from being a trained hunter. Or trained anything. He was going to need help with this. But where was he going to find it? He glanced curiously at Garrett Yaks. This man shall be your protector, the King of the Silver River had promised. I give to him strength to withstand the dangers that will beset you on your journey. When you have need of him, he shall be there. He have frowned. Did Garrett Yaks know all of this? It certainly didn't appear that way. Obviously the old man hadn't come to the weapons master last night as he had come to year. Otherwise the man would have said something by now. That meant it was up to year to explain it to him. But how was the Valman supposed to con convince the weapons master to come with him into the deep banar? For that matter, how was he supposed to convince him that he hadn't simply been dreaming? 
He was still mulling the problem over when his complete astonishment, when to his complete astonishment, Slanter stalked out of the trees. Anything left in the kettle? Slanter asked, scowling at them both. Wordlessly, Garrett Yax handed him a plate. The gnome dropped the pack he was carrying, sat down next to the fire and helped himself to a generous portion of the bread and meat. He stared at him. He looked haggard and irritable, as if he hadn't slept all night. The gnome caught him staring. Eh, what's bothering you? He snapped. Nothing. You looked away quickly, then looked back again. I was just wondering where you'd been. Slanter stayed bent over his plate. Uh, I decided to sleep down by the river. Cooler there. Too hot by the fire. He his eyes strayed down to the discarded pack and the gnome's head jerked up. Took the pack so I could scout up river a bit. Just in case. Thought I'd be certain that nothing... He broke off. I don't have to account to you, boy. What's the difference what I was doing? I'm here now, aren't I? Let me be. He went back to his breakfast, attacking it with a vengeance. He glanced furtively at Gary Yak, but the weapons master seemed to take no notice. The veilman turned again to Slanter. He was lying, of course. His tracks led down river. Gary Yak had said so. Why had he decided to come back? Unless... He had caught himself. The idea was so wild that he could barely conceive of it. But just perhaps the king of the Silver River had used his magic to bring the gnome back again. He could have done that. He had thought, and Slanter would never have been the wiser or realised what was being done to him. The old man could have seen that year would have need for the tracker, a gnome who knew the whole of the Eastland. Then suddenly it occurred to Year that perhaps the king of the Silver River had brought Yet Garrett Yax to him as well, that the weapons master had come to his aid in the Black Oaks because the old man had wanted it so. Was that possible? Was that the reason that Garrett Yax had freed him? All without realising it, Year sat there in stunned silence, his food forgotten. That would explain the reluctance of both Tracker and Soldier of Fortune to discuss the reasons for their actions. They didn't understand it fully themselves. But if that were true, then Year too might have been brought here by similar manipulation. How much of what had happened to him had been the work of the old man. Garrett Yaks finished his breakfast and was kicking out the fire. Slanter too was on his feet, wordlessly pulling on the discarded pack. Yes stared at them in turn, wondering what he should do. He knew that he couldn't just stay silent. Time to go, Garrett Yaks called over, motioning him up. Slanter was already at the edge of the clearing. Wait! Wait just a minute. They turned to stare at him as he climbed slowly to his feet. I've got something to tell you first. He told them everything. He had not intended it to happen that way. But telling one thing led to telling another by way of explanation. Before he knew it, the whole story was out. He told them of Alanon's visit to the Vale and of a story of the old dad of how Bryn and Roan Lee had gone east with the druid to gain entry into the Malmord, and lastly, of the appearance of the King of the Silver River, and of the mission he had given to Year. When he had finished, there was a long silence. Gary Yax walked back to the fallen log and sat down, grey eyes intent. I am to be your protector, he asked quietly. Year nodded. He said you would be. What if I were to decide otherwise? Ye shook his head. I don't know. I have heard some wild tales, but this is the wildest has ever been my misfortune to suffer through, Slanter exclaimed suddenly. What are you up to with all this nonsense? What's the purpose of it? You don't think for a minute anyone sitting here believes a word of it, do you? Believe what you want. It's the truth, Year insisted, refusing to back away as the gnome advanced on him. The truth? What do you know about the truth? Slanter was incredulous. You spoke with the king of the Silver River, 
did you? He gave you magic, did he? And now we're supposed to go trapsing off into the deep NR, are we? And not just into the NR, but right into the teeth of the Black Walkers. Into the male mold. You're mad, boy. That's the only truth there is in any of this. Yeah reached into his tunic and brought forth the pouch containing the silver dust. This is a dust he gave me, Slanter. And here, he pulled the vision crystal on its silver chain free of his neck. You see, I have the things he gave me. Just as I said, look for yourself. Slanter threw up his hands. I don't want to look. I don't want anything to do with any of this. I don't even know what I'm doing here. He wheeled about suddenly. But I'll tell you this, I'm not going into the ANR, not with a thousand crystals or a whole mountain of silver dust. Find someone else who's tired of living and leave me be. Gary Yax was back on his feet. He came over to you, took the pouch from the Valman's hand, slipped the drawstrings open and peered inside. Then he looked up again at you. Looks like sand to me, he said. Yeah glanced down hurriedly. Sure enough, the contents of the pouch looked exactly like sand. There was not a sparkle of silver to be seen in the supposed silver dust. Of course, the colour might be guised to protect against theft, the weapon master mused thoughtfully. A distant look in his eyes. Slanter was aghast. You don't really believe... Garrett Yaks cut him short. I don't believe much of anything, no. His eyes were hard as they shifted to you. Let's put this magic to the test. Take out the vision crystal and sing to it. You hesitated. No, I don't know how. You don't know how. Hmm, Slanter sneered. Shades. Garrett Yax didn't move. This seems like a good time to learn, doesn't it? Yeah, flushed and looked down at the crystal. Neither of them believed the word he had told them. He couldn't really blame them, though. He wouldn't have believed it himself if it hadn't happened to him. But it had. And it had been all too convincing not to be real. He took a deep breath. I'll try. He began to sing softly to the crystal. He held a cup within his hands like a fragile thing. The silver chain dangling down through his fingers. He sang without knowing what it was he should sing or how he could bring the crystal to life. Low and gentle, his voice called to it and asked that it show him Bryn. It responded almost instantly. Light flared within his palm, startling him so that he nearly dropped the crystal, a living thing. The light shimmered, a brilliant white, expanding until it was the size of a child's ball. Gary Yax bent close, his lean face intent. Slanter edged his way back from across the clearing. Then abruptly, Bryn Onsford's face appeared within the light, dark and beautiful, framed by mountains whose slope was stark and towering against a dawn less friendly than their own. Bryn, he whispered. He thought for a moment she might reply. So real was her face within the light, yet her eyes were far distant in their vision, and her ears were close to his voice. Then the vision faded and as an in his excitement excitement Year had ceased to sing and the crystal's magic was spent. The light was gone in the same moment. Year's hands cupped the crystal once more. Where was she? he asked hurriedly. Garrett Yak shook his head. I'm not sure, perhaps But he did not finish. Year turned to Slanter, but the gnome was shaking his head as well. I don't know. Happened too fast. How did you do that, boy? It's that song, isn't it? It's that magic you have. And the magic of the King of the Silver River, you added quickly. Now do you believe me? Slanter shook his head glumly. I'm not going into the ANR, he, he muttered. I need you, Slanter. You don't need me. With magic like that, you don't need anyone. The gnome turned away. Just sing your way into the Malmord, like your sister. Yeah forced down the anger building within him. He shoved the crystal in the pouch with the silver dust back into his tunic. Then I'll go alone, he declared heatedly. 
No need for that quite yet, Garrett Yak swung his pack over his shoulder and started across the clearing once more. First, we'll see you safely to Culhaven, the gnome and me. Then you can tell the dwarves the story of yours. The druid and your sister should have passed that way by now, or word of their passing reached the dwarves. In any case, let's find out if anyone there understands anything of what you've been telling us. Yes, yeah, stalked after him hurriedly. What you're saying is that you think I made this all up? Listen to me a minute. Why would I do that? What possible reason could I have? Go on, tell me. Garrett Yak sna snatched up the Valman's cloak and blanket and shoved them at him as they went. Don't waste your time telling me what I think, he replied calmly. I'll tell you what I think when I'm ready. Together they disappeared into the trees, following the trail that led east along the banks of the Silver River. Slanter watched them until they were out of sight, his rough yellow face twisting with displeasure. Then picking up his own pack, he hastened after, muttering as he went.